Okay, you're not always referencing a journal. Of course, most of your research work will be looking at journals, but there are other things like newspapers and magazines, and here's an example of a magazine. So here again, same kind of idea. We have the author, first author, second author, third author, fourth author, and before the last author, we use ampersand, right? We use this ampersand. And then here we have the year, and magazines and newspapers are issued by day, week, month. So for example, this magazine may be monthly, so you go ahead and after a comma, put in the month, May. And then here we have the title of the article, Enhancing Worker Well-Being, Occupational Health Psychologists Convene to Share Their Research on Work Stress and Health. And here you can see it's all lowercase except after the colon, because after a colon, the first letter of the first word will be capitalized. So that, again, is an exceptional case. Here we have the name of the magazine, and you can see that it, again, is italics. That is, it's just like being underlined. We have a comma. 39 is also italicized at that angle. And then parentheses, no space before, no space inside, five, is the actual issue number. So we have like a volume number and an issue number. So this would probably be something like 39 usually means the 39th year and five would mean the fifth one in that year. Although different journals, different magazines use different numbering systems, but usually the first number would be a big measure like a year and the smaller number would be inside the year that a certain issue inside that year. And then you have the page numbers. So this is the beginning of the article, is page 26, and the end of the article is page 29, and a period at the end. Here's an online magazine that you don't get in print. So here we have the author's name, the first name initial. We have the year and the month, because it's a monthly magazine. Here is the name of the article, Science versus Ideology, and then here we have a colon and a capital after that. Psychologists fight back about the misuse of research. Here is the magazine's name, and that's italicized. Comma, and then 39 is italicized. Six is not italicized. Period. That's the end. Right there's the end. This is it. This is over. However, we're going to add a little bit more, so this is extra on the end. So we don't have a period at the end. This is just like a bit of extra information retrieved from, and here is the URL address. That's a bit of an exceptional case. How about a newspaper article? Because newspapers tend to be daily, don't they? So here's an example of daily. So we've got the author's name, last name, surname, and then the first name, the initial, year, month, and day, because newspapers are daily, aren't they? So this is the way you write it, year, comma, month. You write out the whole month, not the abbreviation, no comma, just a space, and then the day. So year, month, day. And we've got a comma over here. Obesity affects economic social status. That is the name of the article inside the newspaper. The newspaper's name is the Washington Post. And you can see it's in italics, the angle. And PP means that this is a page range, and they don't use regular page numbers. They have this A1, A4 section of the newspaper. So again, you can check the specifics. Each case is a little bit different in the examples I've just given you, and you need to go to the APA guidelines to see exactly how it fits what you're quoting. How about an online newspaper? Again, very similar. We've got the name, we've got the year, month, day, with a comma over here. And then here we've got capital letter to start. This is the name of the article. Then here is the name of the newspaper. And we're over, right there, that period's over. But then we add this retrieve from, and that's the website URL.
how about books or book chapters? Okay, so entire books. If we look at entire books, here's an example. We have the author, which is again going to be the last name, first name, middle name, the year, the title of the book, and its underline or italics, and then the location of the publisher. That is, where's the city the publisher's in, and what's the publisher's name? Now, this is a little bit confusing. Why do we have this? We don't have enough time in this class to explain everything why, and I'm not sure I understand everything why the APA does what it does. However, traditionally, it has been the case that to know the book's volume or where it was printed and when it was printed would be helpful in finding the book. Today, you know that's not so true because books can be printed in different places. They can be e-books. They can be reprinted very easily. So in the case of the MLA style, they've gotten away from this. But APA still does use this for books. And sometimes it can be troublesome. If you have a book and you don't really know where it's published at, usually when you open the book and you look inside the first page or the first couple pages, it will have a location there. Sometimes they have multiple locations. They may say London, New York. Maybe use the first one and stick with that. Also, the date of publication should be in that first page. That's probably the best way to look for it. So here's an example of online, and we're using a URL. And again, it's very similar, only instead of a location and a publisher, what do we have? We have this retrieve from two words, and then we have the URL. Another way we could do this is, again, the same approach, only at the end, here's the period, we're all over. What do we do? We add DOI, the Document Object Identifier. So that is another way. There you go, three different ways that you can do that. There's another case where you have a book, very common in academics, and the book is a collection of articles or a collection of uh, chapters. And those chapters, each one of them has different authors. So each one of them is like a paper and the whole book is kind of like a journal. Now how do we do that? In that case, we can see here that we begin with this at the beginning. Who's the editor of the book? Usually these books will have one or more editors. And again, you treat it just like always. The editor, the name goes here, the surname, the last name, then the first name, then the middle name. And then here we have a little parentheses with capital E, small d, period. That means editor. And then don't forget a period here. I know this is really kind of getting out of control. It's getting to be, you know, a little bit boring. If you look at this right now, you've got the period here, you've got the parentheses, you've got another period, you've got a space. I know, it's like, whoa, it's too much, I can't take it. Just follow the rules and actually it will get easy after a little while. If it's an editor, you use the ED period. If it's an author, you do it this way. If it's a year and you put the parentheses, you have a period and a space after. Once you get used to it, it'll all kind of fall in this place. Don't ask me why it's done this way. And don't even ask me to look at other styles like Chicago and all these other ones that could be even more complicated than this. So just be happy we have the APA that can at often times have at least clear rules that we can follow, even though they can give us a big headache in the process. So pay attention to that. It's not an easy thing to remember off the top of your head, I'll tell you that much. How about a chapter in a book? Okay, now, this is a different case than what we just looked at. What we just looked at here was a whole book. And the book is uh, an editor, which means it's a collection, but the whole book is what we are referencing. A chapter in a book is a little bit different, is that one chapter is the part we're referencing. They may have 10 chapters, 11 chapters, and each chapter is written by a different author. So let's take a look at that. So here is the author. This is the author of the chapter. And here's the second author of the chapter. Here's the year of the book. And then here is the title of the chapter. And please look at that. It's just like the title of the a journal article. The first letter is capitalized, and then the rest are lower case, period. Then you say in, 
capital I N, and then you put the editor. However, here you can see a little bit special here, A, and then editor. So what does this mean? A is the editor's first name. Editor here is the editor's last name. Comma, here's the second editor. There could be many editors to a book. B is the first name. Editor is the last name. And here we have the ampersand because the last one is C editor. C is the first name. Editor is the last name. Then here you put the parentheses. And now look at this. We have E, capital E, lowercase d, lowercase s, period. Why do we have that? Here we have ED, here we have EDS, because ED means editor, EDS means editors, right? Comma, title of the book, and the title is italicized at the angle, just like being underlined. Then we have PP, because it's multiple pages, from what page to what page, period. What is the city of the book's publishing, and what is the publisher's name? Woo, complicated, right? Clear that off there. Here, here's another example. Here's the author, last name, first name, middle name, and author, last name, first, last, <laughs> last name, first name, middle name. Here is the year. Here is the title of the chapter, and it's inside a book, and that book is by the editor and this two editors, A editor and B editor. They're the editors title of the book, from page to what page, and then retrieved from. So here we have the end, just like normal, but now instead of having location and publisher, we're going to have the URL, the web page, where it comes from. Ooh, okay, it's kind of like blowing my mind already, and we just began. This is just the beginning. And it's easy, I think, to look at it and say, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and I won't disagree with you. One more thing we could do is DOI. So same thing all over again, only now we're going to have the document object identifier at the end rather than the URL, rather than the city and the publisher's name. Okay, great. So we're making some progress, I think.